One of these is being recorded with a not-so-inexpensive capture card. The other, an ether noodle. But I'm not going to tell you which one. How's that for an intro? When two computers love one another and they want to share video, they have to invite a capture card into the relationship. Then NDI showed up and turned this three-way into an orgy. So what is NDI? It's a bit of software that lets you send audio and video between computers, cameras, and digital audio workstations, all without having to buy a gang of expensive capture cards. In order to run it, you're going to need both the SDK and the plugin, plus a bit of networking gear. This, this is a router, and this, it's a switch. NDI doesn't really like routers, but you can make it work with just a little bit of port forwarding. And if you're going to be using a switch, hey, smash that multicast button and you're good to go. And that advice goes for props being used in a YouTube video or the props that you bought for your home lab. In order to get this working, we're going to need the OBS version 30 or above. If you're on Debian, check out my build guide on interfacing Linux. If you're using Flatpak, best of luck in your travels. Our first stop is the OBS NDI GitHub page. I mean, the distro AV GitHub page. OBS wanted them to remove OBS from their name. They went with the distro AV instead of N OBS. On the release page, you get a Debian package. Oh, let's build it from source. Now, in order to do that, we need to install a couple of dependencies. Check out the build guide on interfacing Linux for all of your copy pasta needs. On Debian, it looks like this. And on Fedora, it's going to look a little bit like that. Once that's done, we're going to clone the Git repository and change into the distro AV directory. Now we can run CMake with a few additional moon glyphs to configure the project, followed by a CMake build. And finally, with pseudo powers, we will invoke CMake install. Now when we launch OBS, we're greeted with task failed successfully. We still need to install that NDI SDK. So back to the terminal. I'm going to yoink a copy of the SDK with wget and give it an extract, run the installer, press Q, press Y, hit enter, and we're good to go. Now we can change into the NDI directory and copy the NDI bits over to USR local lib. And finally, create a symlink for NDI 5. Back in OBS, we have NDI output settings under tools and NDI source under sources. Let's enable the NDI main output and load up a video. On another PC, I'm going to create an NDI source. Select the source from the dropdown and adjust bandwidth, sync, color space, and latency. Now we have a 1080p 60 stream with audio coming over the network. You can also add an NDI filter to any source, and that's what I'm going to do with this video. Back on the other PC, we can add an additional NDI source, and boom goes that dynamite. But this makes it easy to send individual streams back and forth between multiple PCs. It even works with a digital audio workstation like Reaper. I can use this NDI plugin to send and receive audio over the network. Hop into OBS, add an NDI source, and there we go. Now let's talk about bandwidth. A single 1080p 60 stream is going to average about 16 megabits per second, while a 1440-60 clocks in at 20, and 4K60 hovers around 30 megabits per second, and you need to keep in mind, this is per stream. When it comes to latency, NDI is no slouch given the right network conditions. Capturing the same source, NDI is about 36 milliseconds behind this Blackmagic 4K quad using normal latency. But what happens when we switch the latency to YOLO? Let's take a look with DaVinci Resolve. We can bump a scene transition frame by frame. NDI is now two frames ahead of the Decklink quad. Let's have a look at image quality. Both look pretty good. But if we zoom in just ever so slightly, Wiggle grass, AKA artifacting. And you know what? That's going to be very distracting if your face is pressed directly against a hundred inch display. So there we have it. A not so inexpensive capture card versus NDI 6. And I'm going to represent NDI with a tablet because I kind of forgot to mention that you can turn most Android and iOS devices into wireless cameras with the NDI app and the $20 bill because it's 20 bucks. 
On top of that, you can buy hardware to encode or decode NDI streams. There's even cameras with an NDI hole in the back. At the end of the day, I don't know if I would recommend going NDI only. But you know what? It's a cheap way to expand your existing setup. And as always, there's a full guide on our glorious ad-free web zone. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the forums. Also, if you use NDI or plan to, let me know what you're up to down in the comments section. But most importantly, I want you to get out there and make something awesome with Linux.